Hello people, what's up? So, uh, we are going to deal with uh, your amendments for May 2023 and onwards uh, in the law. So, I am going to categorize this particular uh, topic into two parts. The first part is going to be the major amendments are in the, the FEMA part. Basically, uh, if I have to put it this way, there are three uh, amendments. The first one is in your corporate laws. The next one is in your FEMA part. The third one is in your IBC. Uh, this and this almost are negligible. There is nothing in fact. If you guys have read all the provisions till now, you can definitely just watch some 20 minutes or 30 minutes video and you are up in the track. Now this part people, there is one provision which was way too simple uh, in the previous um, before amendment. Uh, if I have to tell you more specifically, it was with regards to ODI, Overseas Direct Investment. So whatever were the provisions that were already there, now they have replaced the provision with a new one. Now that is the impact of the amendment. Now what and all has happened, we'll see. Sir, is it difficult or easy? I'll not say both people, but uh, you will feel that, uh, you, you know, uh, some terms are not, uh, which you use it in uh, your day-to-day -day sense. Now because of that, you might feel a little complicated, but rest assured people, uh, whatever is the material required, I've made it. Whatever is the uh, summary charts required, I've made it. Uh, and I'll also, for people watching it, you can download the material as well. Uh, so, everything is handled well. But I just believe whatever till today, whatever we have made, whatever is the, uh, you know, the videos and all, whatever is the content to be watched, revisions, everything is made. And now you are sitting only for the amendment part. If that is not made, then amendment is of no use. So first you go, guys, do that and then come back for this. Is this clear, all of you? Yes. Okay. So whenever I'm asking you a question there, if you guys are listening to it, try to answer from there only. So as I said, people, uh, let us not concentrate on uh, the Corporate Law Companies Act. S let us straight away go towards your uh, FMA part. That is your ODI. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh... Okay, let us first start with this part, people. Foreign Exchange Management Overseas Investment Rules 2022. Yes, let us start with this. Okay, so people, first I'll start with that. So let, we have made our own uh, notes. Let us read from this. Everything is covered. And uh, let us go to the summary uh, video as well, wherein uh, we have reduced uh, the content even more. So, uh, Okay, so let us start with this. Okay, so people, if you guys are using my material, so in that uh, there was something called as FEMA Part C, which spoke about overseas direct investment. Now, people, that entire thing has been replaced by overseas investment, something with regards to overseas investment. Now, I believe that people who have not watched my video or people who have uh, watching this just like an amendment. So let us, let me try to keep both of you in the same level and I'll try to explain you the provision. Yes, sir. Now people, whenever there are two terms you guys need to know, what is that? Whenever there is inflow of funds into our company in, in terms of equity, now you can term it as FDI. Whenever our Indian entity, whenever we want to make investment outside, we used to call them as ODI overseas direct investment sir what used to happen before this amendment what was the problem and what is the solution we'll see everything i'll also show you what was the you know what was the uh, hierarchy before and what and all were not dealt and what is happening now okay now people uh, if you remember our old provision people now this was our old uh, chart if you guys remember where did it go Just know it was there. Ah, yes, people. So, see, whenever there is a, a Indian party, if at all they are making a financial commitment in joint venture or wholly owned subsidiary, people, now what I am telling you is before the amendment. So, whenever a Indian party is making a financial commitment in a joint venture or wholly owned subsidiary, we used to call it as ODI. Sir, so financial commitment and ODI, there is no difference. The chapter said ODI, 
But if you look at the, uh, you know, the arrow mark we are using it, we are saying that it is a financial commitment which is coming into picture there. Correct? Huh? Sir, what is financial commitment? We said equity, preference, loan, no guarantee, performance guarantee, everything put together is called as financial commitment. So what is the difference between ODI? What is financial commitment? There was no difference. People in the new amended rules, there is difference between financial commitment. There is difference between ODI. That's the first difference. Yes, sir. The next one, sir, whenever an Indian party, if at all we want to make any investment outside India, where could we make it? People, we could make it in two things. One is uh, a joint venture or a wholly owned subsidiary abroad. Sir, what if it is not my joint venture and it is not my wholly owned subsidiary? Can I still make investment there? People, we could not make it. People, now here also there is a change. You can still make it. Sir, these are the major things. And what else has changed people? Most of it you can find the relevance people. This is the sources somewhere here and there will be same. Uh, Indian party will be same. This prohibited sectors more or less is the same. You can find relevance people. It Relevance is there. But they have added more to that particular topic. If at all you see, according to our old syllabus, ODI was this one particular page. That's all. That was our ODI. Now, people, we have added more to the ODI part. If at all, I have to tell you from the PDF point of view, they have added around uh, 18 to 20 pages. Yes, sir, that is after the amendment. Okay. Now, let us see what has, what is the amendment, what have they introduced and let us go about it. Okay. Now, sir, <clears throat> they have introduced some new rules and regulations for making investments from Indian, uh, from India. Basically, it can be Indian entity. In certain cases, I will call it as PRI, person resident in India. Whenever a person resident in India, whenever you are making an amendment, I mean, whenever you are making an uh, investment outside India, then people, you need to follow two things. What is that? First one people is called as foreign exchange management, overseas investment rules 2022. The next one is people foreign exchange management, overseas investment regulation 2022. They have added two. One is called as rules, one is called as regulation. If you guys have studied your CA final corporate law properly, people, in that I had clearly told you what is the difference between rules and what is the difference between regulation. First thing, people, whenever you are making any investment outside, it can be two types, people. I will generally call it as two types. One people can be debt, debt funds. And the next one people is called as non-debt, equity Allah, non-debt. One is called as debt fund, one is called as non-debt fund. If you remember people, uh, when we, we did our FEMA provisions also, I had clearly told you one thing. Non-debt fund people, I am just calling for a basic understanding I am telling you. Imagine non-debt is equity. There is more in this definition. It is not only equity. People, whatever is equity people, the decisions are taken by central government. Now, whenever I say that there are two types of instrument, one is debt and one is non-debt, the non-debt part is with central government. Debt part is with uh, our uh, RBI. Sir, anything which is decisions to be taken with regards to debt fund people, imagine debentures or any debt related instruments, people, the decision is taken by the authority. So, the word we use here will be regulation. So, what is the difference between the word rule and regulation people? Wherever we use the word rule, rule is always given by central government. Wherever you, we use the word regulation, we use regulation wherever there is a specific authority formed and that authority passes any law. That is called as regulation. Now, in our case people, they have made overseas investment rules also. They have made overseas investment regulation also. You can treat it as part A and part B in this amendment. Sir, part A, whatever is the rules, talks about non-debt instruments. Whenever an Indian party, whenever a PRI, person resident in India, is making investment outside India in form of non-debt instruments, it is governed by rules. Whenever a PRI is making investment into debt, or basically something called as guarantee and all. Sir, that is governed by regulation. That will come in our part two. So first of all, try to understand what is happening. Or else you will feel what is the difference between rules, 
what is the difference between regulation why is that coming why is this coming so first make sure that you are understanding what is there in your amendment is this clear all of you yes okay sir okay now what what has happened let us see clearly now let us go to our amendment sir summarized chart sida i am giving you your uh, basic draft also sir this is also there this is the amendment given by your institute this is a material we made whatever is important whatever is uh, uh, you know you know our way of doing things right you would have seen in your materials so that is there in this particular pdf sir and the next one is people the summary uh, if at all i say that the uh, the fema amendments people imagine if it is uh, 100% is there of odi in your summary chart people i have at least covered 95% somewhere 5% or 10% i'll be giving reference to your material but rest of entire thing is there in this uh, summary chart easy people nothing to worry yes sir do not panic everything is fine easy now let us understand what is it foreign exchange management overseas investment rules 2022 okay sir it came before that what was there sir this rules has superseded superseded means people something was already there now it has replaced the already existing rules what was there before that fema that is foreign exchange management transfer or issue of foreign security regulations 2004 fema acquisition and transfer of immovable property outside india regulations 2015 now people these two regulations with regards to odi sir has been superseded with foreign exchange management overseas investment rules 2022 sir now we have a doubt what now today they have made this amendment before this amendment we have already made some investments what about that people if at all you have followed the previous laws properly and if you have made uh, the investments then it will be considered that you have followed this law only so there is absolutely no problem is this clear am huh? all of you okay sir now people let us try to understand one by one now first thing people before we get into this particular uh, topic rules let us try to understand some definitions some definitions are very important some are ignorable you can even forget also it's okay first one sir in this entire uh, rules wherever you find the word act act means people foreign exchange management act that is your fema act simple one okay the next one people is called as ad category 1 bank authorized dealer we have seen people money changers i i hope you guys remember that so sir ad category 1 banks are those banks who has license to deal with this particular with regards to the foreign exchange who has a special license from rbi sir they are categorized as ad category 1 banks now what is the definition according to this particular uh, overseas investment rules people ad category 1 bank means a person authorized under subsection 1 of section 10 of the act if you remember our uh, section 10 under our fema we had seen a big transaction with regards to uh, ad bank so whoever is there that person only it seems and for the purpose of these rules this is addition people ad bank shall mean only the domestic branches of the ad bank so people whatever belongs to india domestic branches only that will be considered as ad bank and not the other branches this is one extra word they have added just remember that is this clear okay next one sir the word control control is important people going forward we will be using this word uh, one uh, at least like in, in four to five uh, uh, you know different concepts we'll be using the word called control now what do you mean by the word called control people control means control means the right to appoint majority of directors imagine people there is company a there is company b i am not at all talking about shareholding if company a can decide who should be the directors in company b whom to appoint whom to remove if this company is deciding who should be director who should not be a director in company b company a is said to have control over company b i am nowhere talking about shareholding yet so if one company can control the directors of the another company you have said to be having the control over the another company yes sir or to control management or policy decisions sir i am not controlling the directors 
but what company b should do i am controlling that the policy decisions of company b what they should do what they should not do the company a is controlling people then also a is said to have control over company b sir now how am i getting this sir that is how am i getting the right to control the directors of company b or how am i getting right to take the policy decisions of the company b how am i getting it can be by virtue of the shareholding the company a has some shareholding in company b because of that or it is because of any management rights or it can be because of any shareholders agreements what is shareholder agreements whenever a new shareholder wants to come in i believe you guys watch uh, this shark tank in shark tank generally what happens people there will be a new investor that will come in let us take for example aman or anupam anupam wants to come in if you guys watch shark tank you will know whenever the new investors wants to come in they will have conditions so for example i want to invest 2% uh, of equity in your company that's all only 2% but people i am a big person in the in the market now imagine if you guys watch shark tank there is this uh, lens card what is that person piyush shah now these people are already there they are big people in the market so though i am giving them only 1% or 2% but they are big i want more from them so i will listen to whatever they say so don't think if, if i have only 1% 2% how can i have control i can have control it is end of the day one agreement i agree to give it to you that is only called a shareholder agreement or sir voting rights of 10% or more or in any other manner meaning people if you have voting rights of 10% or more sir now because of any of these things people if you have a control over the other entity then you are said to have control according to this particular rules people this particular uh, rules uh, the, sorry control uh, definition is important wherever it is important people i'll mark it as question so pay more attention there yes sir okay so sir when control means the right to appoint majority of directors or to control management or policy decision sir is it uh, one person or uh, i'll do one thing sir you are saying that if i have everything on my own it is said to have control i will split it between companies if you watch shark tank only there will be three four judges shark tank all of them will come in so if you see all of them are collectively controlling no so sir that is what is written here by a person or persons acting in concert whether directly or indirectly person acting in concert means people for for you to understand what i am telling people of course because it is an amendment uh, class i am not able to show you the entire shark tank episode and all but if you guys can watch one of the shark tank episode you guys will get a fair idea generally what will happen all the judges they will come as a pack they will say you take 1% i'll take 1% you will take 1% they are taking 3% only but they are all acting collectively that is called as pack person acting in concert so the control can be individually or even through a group it is said to have control is this clear a control definition is important okay next one people uh, disinvestment means simple investment is coming in Dis disinvestment means selling and coming out equity capital equity capital is equity capital only but it includes people Com fully and compulsorily convertible instruments meaning uh, compulsorily convertible debentures compulsorily convertible preference shares will also be considered as equity only not so relevant for your amendment but remember not only here in all the cases compulsorily convertible instruments are always considered as equity always remember that okay ah people now it is important people financial commitment people there are majorly four terms your your uh, amendment rules have given for what are those four terms people one is called as financial commitment the next one is called as overseas investment the third one is called as odi the fourth one is called as opi these four terms people you can expect a question from any of these four important earlier i told you there was no difference we used to call the regulations as odi but uh, we used to say anything made by indian entity in the foreign entity we used to call it as a financial commitment then what is the difference between fc and odi there was no clear picture at all so now they have clearly told what is fc what is odi what is oa they have just, just clearly bifurcated it now what do you mean by fc oi odi opi we'll see first one sir 
what do you mean by financial commitment financial commitment means people aggregate of investment by pri by odi debt other than opi non fund based facilities in a foreign entity sir now what do you mean by this sir this let us first try to make it as a simple term see first only summary in that also you need another summary financial commitment means people aggregate of odi plus debt not all the debt debt other than debt other than opi and the people it includes it includes non it includes non fund based non fund based facilities so sir what do you mean by financial commitment people when one company is making uh, some commitment not i'll i'll not say okay now see financial commitment means sir aggregate of investment by pri so a person resident in india if at all they are making some you know uh, something is going outward basically you can say it as something as a remittance something is going outward sir what is going a pri a pri is making some investment outside india so let us take it as foreign entity a indian entity for now considered as indian entity only a indian entity is making some investment in foreign entity how are they making people it can be by way of odi it can be by way of debt it can be by way of non fund based that is what they have given no non fund based earlier this bifurcation was not there if you see closely end of the day it is same only can you see this people where did it go why is it just going away see under financial commitment equity is there preference is there loan guarantee bank guarantee performance guarantee can you see this yes sir can you see this guarantees and all people everything was coming under financial commitment now also it's same but they have just categorized what are they categorized people now equity will be considered as odi equity will be considered as odi sir anything with regards to loan directly loan people whatever is directly loan loan will be considered as people debt sir anything apart from debt based we wrote something called as non fund based people that is nothing but guarantee today we are not giving money we are giving guarantee but if at all something happens we may have to give the money people that is called as people non fund based understood da yes sir now see sir odi debt non fund based is clear people this is called as people fc what is that fc sir financial commitment is clear ah yes sir now see aggregate of investment by pri in the form of odi debt other than opi what is debt other than opi and all we'll see first we need to understand what is opi for that plus non fund based facilities in a foreign entity non fund based means people it can be guarantee performance guarantee bank guarantee we'll see all that as we go into the chapter it will be clear but remember important easy definition no odi plus debt other than uh, opi plus non fund based facility yes sir now it is called as financial commitment okay sir now what do you mean by odi odi means people when i'm just telling you from indian entity you can actually consider it as pri point of view sir when a pri in, is investing in uh, the foreign entity when a pri is investing in a foreign entity sir how in these four ways acquisition of equity and in a unlisted foreign entity meaning sir i am acquiring shares which are unlisted which shares i am acquiring people this is more important pay attention what is this sir whenever i am acquiring equity in a unlisted company that is first one second one people subscription to moa in a foreign entity sir what is acquisition what is subscription people i hope you guys know the simple thing acquisition is basically we use the word where one person acquires the shares in another company it is basically used when the company is already existing 
subscription comes into picture when you are newly investing the money into a company so people this will be a existing company this will be in the case of existing company this will be in the case of new company so if any person is investing money in the new company which is setting up people that is also called as what people odi so first one is acquiring unlisted second one is people subscription to moa of a newly incorporated company third one investment of 10% or more of equity in listed foreign entity 10% or more sir there is one listed entity outside let us take tesla so now it is listed entity if at all people the person resident in india if at all is acquiring 10% or more so even inclusive 10 is inclusive sir this is also called as what people odi now your question can be but remember this this part there is one exclamatory i'll come back what is that people when a pri invest more than 10% in a listed entity 10% or more it is called as odi okay i'll come back there is one thing which we need to understand hidden thing there what is that we'll see the fourth one people investment of less than 10% of listed foreign entity plus control now what is it sir <coughs> if at all sir pri is investing in tesla only how much sir if it is 10% or more you will come here sir what if i invest 8% sir what if i invest 8% people if you invest 8% you need to satisfy one more condition what is that sir you need to also have control if at all a pri invests less than 10% but holds control in the listed entity then also this will be considered as fd i mean it will be considered as odi people repeat the four conditions people what do you mean by odi pri acquiring shares of a unlisted foreign entity second one people equity everything is equity second one people subscribing the shares of moa basically new company third one people investing in a listed entity 10% or more of equity capital people the fourth one where the investment is less than 10% but has control now what is this control definition we have already seen so if at all you are coming under that or this uh, what is that appointing majority directors or you are taking uh, policy decisions because of shareholders agreement shark tank and all people you are said to have made odi so sir if these four things are satisfied people it is called as odi yes sir is this clear sir now we have a doubt what definitely you guys will not have a doubt but it is a doubt which i am creating that you might have what is that sir we invested in tesla today how much sir we invested 11% sir now is it odi yes it is odi sir what if tomorrow this 11% reduces whatever we have invested what if that dilution happens what if it reduces people once it is an odi even in the future if it reduces it will still be continuing as odi it will be considered as odi itself same way sir what if today i invested 8% sir and i have control today and tomorrow i lose control now what will this 8% be considered as 8% going forward will be considered as odi itself is clear ah all of you important people odi uh, pay maximum attendance uh, attention that uh, there can be all possible way that they can ask you a question from here is it clear ah so these four are called as odi now people in this definition we got what is uh, fc now in this fc you got to know what is odi so people in financial commitment odi also comes so financial commitment is a broader term remember that is this clear ah uh? okay sir so the third important term sir overseas investment what is overseas investment sir overseas investment means people overseas investment means financial commitment plus so opi basically people everything put together is called as overseas investment when a company makes everything overseas whatever is the investment they are making it can be either financial either opi it will be nothing else because under financial odi is also covered so sir what is overseas investment financial commitment plus opi is called as oi overseas investment overseas investment for us is not having much relevance for us what is more important financial commitment will be more important odi is more important opi here and there will come yes sir okay so now what do you mean by opi see look at the opi definition 
ओवर ओपीए स्टा फॉर पीपल ओवर ओवरसीज पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट ओपीआई इन्वेस्टमेंट इन फॉरेन सिक्योरिटीज एक्सक्लूडिंग मीनिंग सर पर्सन इन इंडिया पी आर आई इज मेकिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट इन फॉरेन सिक्योरिटीज ओके हाउ एक्सक्लूडिंग दिस मीनिंग सर इफ यू आर मेकिंग एनी इन्वेस्टमेंट विच इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड एज ओडीआई सर यू आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन अनलिस्टेड डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स सर इफ यू आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन सिक्योरिटी इश्यूड बाई पी आर आई नॉट इन आई एफ एस सी दिस आई एफ एस सी प्रोविजन विल कम लिटिल वाई लेटर तो सर दीज थिंग्स आर एक्सक्लूडेड Sir, excluding these people, if you are making any investment, sir, that will be called as OPI. Sir, investment in foreign securities. Sir, what is not included? Excluding these three. What three are excluded? ODI, unlisted debt instruments, and people security issued by PRI, not in IFSC. Securities issued by person resident in India, not in IFSC. People, uh, okay. IFSC part I'll tell you once we see IFSC definition we'll come back here yes sir we'll see but sir what is OPI people ODI unlisted debt instruments securities issued by person resident in India who is not in IFSC sir these things are not considered as OPI anything apart from this is called as OPI sir give us example sir give us an example of OPI people just now I told you what imagine people you are making an investment in Tesla. You are making an investment in Tesla. Okay, how much, sir? I am investing seven percent. Okay, do you have control? No, sir. I don't have control. People, if you do not have control, then this seven percent is not ODI. You know, then what will you call it as? You have to give it a terminology. People, it will be considered as OPI. Just one of the example I am giving you. Understood? Da, all of you, pakka na. So people, so for our sake, what is OPI, sir? In our summary, we'll write that OPI people is investment other than investment other than people ODI, ODI, and unlisted debt instrument and people. any issue by pri not in ifsc what is ifsc now we'll see but for now focus on this, this is more than uh, sufficient yes, so this four terminology is very important yes sir huh. ha so sir uh, correct now people one is uh, financial commitment One is called as ODI, one is called as OI, one is called as OPI. All four are important. So, if you ask me from definitions point of view, people, five things are very important. These four plus control, which we have written here, is very very important. There can be a question asked. Prepare and go. Very important. I hope this is clear, all of you. There is no doubts. Yes, all of you. Okay. Now let us go to ah huh, the scene note. Once the investment is classified as ODI. subsequent reduction below 10% or loss of control will still be treated as odi itself is this clear all of you yes people okay sir next one sir sir let us see the next definitions financial service regulator financial service regulator in india who is our financial service regulator basically people there is a rbi wherever in the term we will be using financial service regulator this is the person we will be telling you need to get the authorities approval and all so which authority this this authority one is rbi next one is sebi next one is irda insurance regulatory development authority and next one is people pfrda pension fund regulatory and development authority sir so these people are considered as financial service regulators for these regulations clear ah huh? okay next one sir foreign entity foreign entity means people an entity formed or registered or incorporated outside india including ifsc that has limited liability provided that restriction of limited liability shall not apply to an entity with core activity in a strategic sector okay what is foreign entity an entity which is formed registered or incorporated see they are using three words formed registered incorporated so however it can be 
so we use the word incorporated for a company we use the word registered for a partnership but they have not given like this but i'm telling you why different words will generally be used yes sir okay sir so anything which is incorporated outside india is called as a foreign entity but it includes ifsc what is this ifsc people ifsc in your class i would have told you people there is something called as international financial service center in india people to exchange uh, basically you can take it like this people there are a lot of transactions where indians want to invest outside india outsiders wants to invest in india basically what people in financial products financial sectors so what are these financial sectors people this financial sectors can be this financial sectors can be people it can be banking it can be share market or people it can be even your insurance or etc so sir all these are financial related products so what did we do people uh, our modi ji they started one uh, project people the project only is called as ifsc international financial service center whenever there is any finance to be exchanged between the people of two different countries it can be uh, uh, you know india and any other person it can be entities it can be individuals sir whenever there is exchange whether the indian rupee wants to go out or the dollar wants to come inside it will happen through this ifsc people this ifsc there is only one ifsc in india that one ifsc is called as gift city a beautiful project people that is uh, built in gujarat Yes, sir. You can see this is uh, the gift city. There is only one IFSC in India today, but this has everything. People, it is spread across around eight hundred acres of campus. Yes, sir. Uh, it has almost uh, it, it, the the transactions people that happen in gift cities uh, measured in terms of trillions, not even billions, trillions. Yes, sir. So that that is the volume of transactions that happen. So the law is telling people now. Imagine this is the gift city IFSC. Now this entire thing is called as IFSC. in this ifsc if at all there is any indian entity situated in this only if it is situated and if you are investing money in the entity which is situated in this ifsc that entity for us will be considered as foreign entity itself it seems understood it is like scz only people whatever is the scz provisions you guys will uh, would have seen for india scz is considered as a export you would have seen that in your uh, taxation and all now people that is the same thing people ifsc if any company is situated here and if a person is investing money in that company for us it will be considered as what people it will be considered as a foreign company only foreign entity only is this clear all of you yes people okay so uh, example standard chartered hsbc bank uh, uh, you know jp morgan Uh, Deutsche Bank, all these are there. People in uh, IFSC, stock exchanges are there. Foreign portfolio investors, if they want to come and invest in India, they come through this route. Understood, da? Uh, all of you, okay. So that is called IFSC. Very important. Now that is what is given here in OPI. Security issued by PRI, not in IFSC. If at all in IFSC, if there is any company. if they are issuing any security if you are investing in that it is considered as opi only it seems but he is not in ifsc so he is a indian only so basically indian investing in indian company obviously it is not overseas da it is indian investment only that is what they are trying to tell in opi definition is this clear ah uh, all of you pakka okay sir so that is your uh, foreign entity next one host country is obviously the law where the country we are referring to is situated indian entity means company a body corporate a llp and people a partnership firm which is registered so who can whenever i am telling you indian entity indian entity includes company body corporate llp and registered partnership firm unregistered is not considered here yes sir ifsc we just saw last audited balance sheet 
So we'll be telling you, you have to file a report and all. So then what do you mean by last audited balance sheet? A balance sheet people, which is not older than 18 months before the date of the transaction. So if I tell you, you have to file, uh, you know, you'll have to calculate the net worth according to your latest balance sheet. The latest balance sheet should not be older than 18 months. That's the meaning. Remember, we'll be seeing the reference as we go forward. Listed foreign entity which is listed on recognized stock exchange outside India, listed Indian company, basically who have listed their equity or fully convertible instrument on the recognized stock exchange in India, mutual fund which is registered with SEBI, nothing, net worth people, what do you mean by net worth? Net worth, they say, net worth means according to section 2, clause 57 of Companies Act, whatever is given, that is the definition of net worth. That they have not given you what is that. I have given you how to calculate that. You guys can just refer. It is not there in syllabus. I have added for your information. That's all. Not there in syllabus. Sir, if at all it is for LLP or registered partnership firm, how do I calculate a net worth, sir? The net worth can be calculated in this way for LLP or registered partnership firm. How? The capital contribution plus undistributed profits. If at all there are losses, deduct it. Deferred expenditure deducted, miscellaneous expenditure not written off, deducted. That will give you net worth. Sir, why is net worth important? We'll see. What is the relevance of net worth? We'll see. Is this clear all of you? Okay. ODI, we saw overseas investment, overseas portfolio investment. Relative shall have the same meaning of Companies Act. We had seen it in independent director, same thing. Resident individual means a person, resident in India, who is a natural person. RFX, RF, RFC account, what is RFC account people? Resident foreign currency account. Now imagine, there is any Indian citizen who has uh, gone abroad. Now he has become an NRI. He has worked there really hard. Now he wants to come back to India. Now when he was an NRI, he would have made some investments. He would have invested in some land and all. He would have made some uh, good uh, you know, bank balance. Now, when he's coming back, he wants to still hold the money there. Probably he might want to go back somewhere in the future again uh, to uh, say, for example, US or any country. So when a NRI is coming back to India, he can open one account in India, which can still hold the amount you have earned outside in terms of foreign currency. So an account which is opened in India, which can hold the money in terms of foreign currency is called as resident foreign currency account. So you are residing in India, but the denomination of the account is foreign currency. Yes, sir. sir why, why is this account so special? Remember, the money in this account is something which is not taken from India. You have earned it outside India, you are bringing it back to India. That's all. So any money you want to spend here from this particular account, if you want to spend any money, you do not have much of restrictions. Whatever we'll be seeing, we'll be seeing some limits and all. Those limits and all will not apply for this particular transaction. That is the beauty of RFC. You can you can invest anything. That's the beauty. That's the reason we need to know what is RFC. So NRI when he's permanently coming back to India, whatever is the foreign reserves they have earned, now that they will maintain in the form of reserves and that is called as people RFC account. While in, while in India, you can maintain this money in the form of foreign currency. Clear on? Yes, sir. Okay. Next one is people. SEBI. SEBI, obviously, you guys know. Society, not important. Subsidiary or steps down, steps down subsidiary. What do you mean by this, people? Imagine there is a holding company. A holding company is investing more than one half of the paid up capital in subsidiary. It is called as subsidiary. Sir, if this company has one more subsidiary, now this we refer to it as step down subsidiary. Now, in this particular chapter, you'll be seeing the cross-reference for step-down subsidiary in a lot of places. So just remember what is step-down subsidiary. Is this clear? Okay. Sir, what is strategic sector? In certain places, they have given you what is strategic sector. Remember that. What is that, sir? Shall include energy, natural resources, oil, gas, coal, mineral, submarine cable system, startups, and any other sector or subsector as deemed necessary by central government. Strategic sector shall include energy and natural resources. For example, Tesla is into energy. You can call it as a, a you know a strategic sector. 
getting the point huh? so uh, central government can add any other thing to this particular list so whenever we are seeing strategic sector just remember this oil gas mineral energy it is called as strategic sector sweat equity people is the equity shares which are issued by overseas foreign entity to its directors or employees at a discount or for consideration other than cash so you are giving them because to retain them they have worked hard for you you are giving them shares it is called as sweat equity trust means not important venture capital fund registered with sebi not important okay now this can be a little important what are debt instruments what are non debt instruments sir why is it important people indirectly whatever are the non debt instruments people for them the rules will be applicable whatever are the debt instruments nowhere it is specifically written but indirectly you will only feel that for the debt instruments people somewhere regulations will apply somewhere you will feel that but not for everything yes sir so wherever it is written as debt and non debt what is considered as debt according to this particular amendment it is considered as first one government bonds considered as debt itsums corporate bonds issued by corporates debt itsums all tranches of securitization structure which are not equity tranche people here i can give you two things one i can just say this remember and i can leave it the second thing is if you want to understand yes so or else it is not important you can just ratta mar all tranches of securitization structure which are not equity tranche yes sir if you want so i'll just explain it for people who do not need it you can skip it whatever is the explanation i'm giving it is not needed now what i mean by securitization now imagine people banks give loans to so many people now when these people do not repay now this loan for a bank will become a non performing asset it is also popularly called as npa when a when a debt is not repaid people we term it as non performing asset now it's a loss for a bank now what will banks do people there are some companies called as src and arc securitization companies now what they will do whatever are this uh, basically you can take it as a loan the entire loans will be given to src securitization companies now the securitization companies will take away all those loans and they will immediately settle money to the banks so that the banks can focus on their operations more for example imagine if the non performing asset value is 1 lakh immediately the securitization companies will immediately settle off 90000 rupees to the bank now bank is relieved whether money is got or not received it is not uh, the bank headache now what will securitization companies do they will recover the money from whoever is the borrower they will go to this borrower however they want they will recover the money from the borrower now such things are called as people securitization earlier in your ca final this was there now they removed that chapter that's the reason it is not there but or else the entire chapter was there called as securitization we also call it as surfaci yes sir sir now why are we discussing about that now people the question is whenever this company is giving 90000 rupees to the bank in our example i am giving 90000 in reality it will be in hundreds of crores now the question is from where did these people get money so what these people will do these people will issue some securities they will issue some securities in different rounds so they will have, now for example this company would have purchased non performing asset 1 2 3 they won't buy only one no there will be more of such non performing assets some non performing assets people will always have collateral what do you mean by collateral whoever is the borrower from him the bank would have taken some uh, loan say for example some security it can be land it can be some building it can be gold they would have taken some collateral and then they would have given money so the non performing assets can be uh, supported with collateral or even without collateral can be there aisa so now the securitization company they want money right some from where will they get people they will issue securities now people will buy those securities people will buy those securities now they will raise this money in uh, different uh, transactions whenever they want money they will keep raising once twice thrice four times they will keep raising whoever gives money the first time people in the first transaction the first line this uh, this will always be secured because they will always have collateral the down you go people the risk increases 
Yes, sir. All this is not there, people. But just to understand the term, I'm just telling you. Yes, sir. So the first the first transaction is always secured. The the downer the down you go, people. The risk increases because there will be no security. Getting the point, ah? Uh, so people, the first one is always secured. The last transaction will always be equity. They will issue equity in this company and they will raise money. Because they are very risky, they need to get something in return. So they will get equity of this company. Yes, sir. Sir, now whatever transaction they did, first transaction, second transaction, third transaction. Now these are called as tranches. These are called as tranches. Yes, sir. You have reference to this and this now. Now see what they are saying. Sir, what is a debt? All tranches of securitization structure. Which are not equity tranche, sir. Except the last one, all these are considered as debted sums. So, if you are investing in this, sir, if a Indian company is investing it, it is called as debtor. People, the last one will come here. See here. Can you see this? The junior most layer, junior most layer. This is called as senior most layer. This is called as junior most layer. The junior most layer will come in non-debt. Can you see this equity tranche of securitization structure? And nowhere you will find it. Done. But to understand, I just told you. But if you guys didn't understand, forget it. It is not at all required for your syllabus. Nowhere relevant. Clear? Ah, okay. Fourth one: borrowings by firms through loans. Firm people, if at all any firms are borrowing, it is called as debt instrument itself. Depository receipts whose underlying securities are debt securities. What is depository receipts, people? For example, a Indian company, if they want to issue securities outside India, yes, sir. Now what they will do? The Indian company will go to a custodian here. It will give securities to the custodian. The custodian he will inform one more person outside India that one more person is called as depository. The depository will print. They will print fresh, uh, you know, instruments outside. The fresh instrument are called as depository receipts. I'm explaining you concepts. You might feel I'm not explaining also because people, uh, these are all, uh, you know, part of your classroom learning. Uh, that they have just used the word depository receipts. That is like a 20 minutes discussion topic. But just understand, whenever an Indian company wants to raise money from abroad, you would have seen what I in FEMA I would have explained you ADR, GDR, and all. So what they will do, they will give some uh, securities as collateral to a custodian in India. He will keep the securities with him. He will tell a person outside India. Imagine US. I have securities now. You do one thing. You can issue depository receipts outside India. Now people in US will invest in this particular depository receipts. Sir, what is the beauty of depository receipts? People, whatever the securities you have given to the custodian in India, the security is a vast definition. You can give equity, you can give debentures, you can give any instrument here based on which another security will be created outside. That's the reason they are called as derivatives. Now, people, what are they saying? Whenever there are depository receipts uh, that is issued outside, People, if the underlying instrument is debenture, it will be called as debt. If the underlying instrument is equity, it will be called as non-debt. Read. Depository receipts whose underlying securities are debt securities. You will see the corresponding point here. Depository receipts issued against equity instruments are called as people non-debt. Understood? Huh? Too much? Huh? Okay. Concentrate. Definitions are important people. After that, everything is like, okay, manageable. Sir, what is non-debt instruments? All investments in equity, incorporated entities is called as non-debt. Capital participation in LLP is called as non-debt. See, capital, non-debt. All instruments of investment recognized in FDI. So in FDI, in FDI chapter, whatever instruments we saw, all that is called as non-debt. Investment in units of AIF, REITs and Infrastructure Investment Trusts. It is called as non-debt. 
I believe you guys would be would have heard of this AIF REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust and Infrastructure Investment Trust. What do they do? Real Estate Investment Trust. They will form one trust. Mutual fund. What will they do, people? They will take money from so many people. They will take money from so many people. What will mutual fund do? Mutual fund will further invest in some companies. They will invest in the shares of some companies. This is called as mutual fund. People, the same thing is done by one more form of trust that is called as REIT. What does REITs do, people? REITs invest in real estate. They will take money from so people like you. Now, in India, it is becoming popular like crazy. They will take money from people like you. They will invest in land. They will build complex. They will build buildings. They will give that building on rent. Whatever is the money they get, that will be a return to you. They will keep selling and buying lands. Whatever is the return, they will get the income as uh, difference of the money will be given as income to the investor. Now, these are called as REITs. The same way in which AIF and all works. So, if at all you are investing in the instruments issued by that, it is called as non debt. Next one investments in units of mutual fund exchange traded funds sir mutual funds which invest more than 50 percent in equity people mutual funds da let us take same example sir a company is taking money from lot of us okay now where is this mutual fund investing the money they can invest money in debentures also they can invest money in equity also Sir, if at all the company is investing more than, if mutual fund is investing more than 50% of its funds in equity, then whatever investments the mutual fund is raising, even that will also be considered as non-debt only. Sir, what if they are investing more than 50% in debentures, it will be considered as debt then. Clear, huh? all of you? Okay. Answer, the junior most level, uh, this PF sign. Next one, acquisition sale or dealing directly in immovable property immovable property will be seen we have it in our discussion that is important contribution to trust trust also we have it will be seeing in our topic yes sir so sir these are called as debt instruments these are called as non-debt instruments is this clear people all of you yes sir yes sir okay so till now what we have seen people we have seen definitions and we told that what are the types of debt instruments? What are the non-debt instruments? Is this clear so far? Okay, sir. Sir, the next one, non-applicability of these rules and regulations. Sir, these rules, whatever we are seeing, it does not apply to few people, it seems. Important. These rules or regulations will not apply to few things, it seems. Sir, for where, where does it not apply to? First one, people. Investment made outside India by a financial institution in IFSC. I gave you an example. Standard Chartered Bank has been set up in IFSC. HSBC has been set up in IFSC. Sir, now these banks are already set up in IFSC. They are financial institutions. Sir, now if these people are making any overseas investment, see, read carefully, investment made outside India by financial institutions, which is in IFSC. Now, they have been set up there, eh, that their job is only that, uh, in fact, it is not easy one. They have an entire regulation only applic applicable for them. That's the reason they are telling you this easy regulation does not apply on them. There are more stricter regulations applicable to them. Yes, sir. So, for them, it is not applicable. Okay. Second one, acquisition or transfer of any investment outside India, out of, see, RFC account. Resident foreign currency account, hey, it is your money which you earned outside, which you brought back. You are want to invest that only. Where, hey, you remember our uh, childhood days, da? your childhood days? There I told you, when will uh, RBI be concerned? When will RBI hit you? RBI will hit you only when your hand goes towards RBI's hundi. Whenever your forex, whenever you are planning to deplete forex, RBI will hit you. So, RFC is never part of our Indian Forex. You earned everything outside. So, even if you reinvest that, we don't have a problem. Is clear? Huh? Second one, people. The foreign currency resources outside India by a person employed in India, duration of which does not exceed three years. Sir, now what do you mean by this? Imagine, people. There is a person who has come to, Indi come to India. He is working in India on some employment, it seems. He is working in India for employment. 
and the employment duration people should not exceed 3 years it should be within 3 years a person has come to india he is working in india his employment should not exceed for a period of 3 years sir give us an example let us take example abd villiers we literally loved him play in our uh, rcb though we did not win anything now imagine people we thought if at all rcb is trained by abd villiers our team will go somewhere else e sara chip sorry cup nam de we will say now people the law said whenever a person is coming from outside india now imagine he stayed in india for 2 years imagine we appointed abd villiers for 2 years we wanted to try it out if at all it works it works if not let us not make it uh, you know make him a full time coach when he is in india he already has foreign resources outside india he has foreign currency outside india though for our definition he becomes pri because he is in india for the last 2 years the law says whatever investments he wants to make out of his own money outside india he can make absolutely no problem clear ah the third one people as per section 6 subsection 4 of the act sir what is section 6 subsection 4 that is what they have given i am i am not reduced it is section 6 of fema act what is this fema act people sir a pri they are telling some rules are not applicable to pri i mean whatever this rules and regulations it is not applicable to a investment made by pri correct ah yes sir sir if at all the pri is coming under section 6 sub section 4 then it is not applicable it seems sir when people when our pri went outside india he earned money when he was a proi any money he earned when he was a proi out of that if he wants to make any investment it is absolutely allowed one second one what else was there in section 6 sub section 4 the second thing was people imagine people there is a, a a person resident outside india yes sir let us take for example your priyanka chopra nick jones and all yes sir sir now imagine priyanka chopra will have someone in india i do not know their family tree and all if something happens to proi who is our uh, uh, you know celebrity if something happens to the proi people due to inheritance everything will come to pri no sir with such currency if you make any investments people this particular rules and regulations will not apply basically inheritance so sir non applicability of these rules and regulations people it will not apply in uh, basically two cases the first case people a uh, financial institutions which is set up in ifsc and making overseas investment not applicable second one people if you are acquiring or transferring so if you are buying or selling any investment outside india which is made out of rfc account or foreign currency reserves by a person employed in india the duration does not exceed 3 years and as per section 6 sub section 4 do not make it down and all i have given you what is section 6 sub section 4 clearly in your pdf this is clear all of you so when he was proi inherited these two are important more than sufficient is this clear all of you yes sir pakka na so this is your non applicability rules or regulations this is important they can ask you a question here all of you okay the next one i hope you guys are understanding people yes ha ah, try to check yourself what do you mean by financial commitment what is fc ha ah, correct fc includes odi debt other than opi non fund based is called fc sir what do you mean by odi odi had that four what is that first one investment acquiring equity in unlisted uh, unlisted company subscription to moa listed entity 10% or more less than 10% but has control so this is called as odi sir what is you what do you mean by oi what is oi oi was a broader definition oi includes uh, fc plus opi what was opi any investment made in securities other than odi listed debt ifs other than uh, companies pri set up other than ifsc is called as opi clear okay okay now people we are done with the basic definitions and all now let us see the concepts what they say the first one is called as overseas investment now if i have to make overseas investment then what is the rule 
first let us see the summary chart let us also see what is in your book so that you will not get confused and all yes sir sir a pri whether directly or through step down subsidiary all a special purpose vehicle special purpose vehicle are the companies which are open for a temporary purpose so you can invest directly or through step down subsidiary or through a temporary vehicle special purpose vehicle so if at all any investment is made in a foreign entity engaged in bona fide business activity bona fide means people that should be the purpose of that company you can invest for that particular company's purpose it is allowed yes sir sir how subject to limits given in this act and according to the conditions given in this rules and regulations you can make any investment so a person resident in india can make any investment in a foreign entity for its bona fide business activities according to the limits given in this particular rules and according to the conditions given in this particular rules sir what is the limit if you guys remember our previous thing that is only the limit what is that 400% or 1 billion dollar ah now that 1 billion dollar is not there what is there is only 400% that is there that's all we'll be seeing that will be coming later also but for now just remember the limit is 400% you can make a overseas investment is this clear ah okay so this is general so if you want you can make according to rules according to regulation special points are here what are the special points people if a foreign entity is incorporated in pakistan or any other jurisdiction prescribed by central government so if you want to make any investment in a company which is registered in pakistan or any other thing which is governed by central government if central government says that no going forward if you are in bangladesh also then you need to ask me and invest if i have notified any other country if you want to make investment into such countries it can happen only with the prior approval of central government yes sir generally nothing else you can make according to the limit according to conditions but this is a extra condition second thing sir what is the limit people limit i said how much people the limit is 400% of net worth correct ah sir i have a beautiful i mean there is a company basically people why this entire thing was lifted logically think now us is undergoing a recession huge recession that to uh, uh, in the recent time that svb bank and all failed uh, the entire banking system is down uh, you as a person you can also make use of this opportunity it is a right time to invest in that stocks also uh, there are many platforms uh one one platform is called as uh, what is it uh, uh, ind ind bank or what is it oh, one second i have the app i forgot the name only nowadays the patent will be different and the this one will be different ind money so this is a platform uh using this platform you can make uh, investment in uh, foreign companies you can buy your tesla you can buy everything Yes, sir. It is allowed. See, invest in U.S. stocks from India. Now, I have only invested. It is allowed. Yes, sir. So you can make use of it. Now, sir, you are telling four hundred percent is the maximum you can invest, sir. But there is a beautiful opportunity outside. Now, what to do? Now, the law said, don't worry, da macha. You write one application to me. Who is me? Me is central government. Make an application, sir. Okay, I'll make an application. Now, what happens? On an application made. to central government it may permit the financial commitment in strategic sectors or certain geographies meaning certain places about the limits prescribed what is strategic sector we saw energy oil coal and all kg of people coal rocky boy yes sir strategic sector it seems so people if you want to invest in such sectors you can write an application to central government to increase the limit central government will increase the limit is clear all of you simple uh, there is nothing here that not, not important also but just see what is if it's required i'll tell you if we have to read or not uh, this is not required people no objection certificate mark there may be a question asked here there may be a question asked here now what is no objection certificate simple i have simplified everything i got a raw banana from amendment i kept it for a while i made it a fruit peeled also now i am giving it to you now it is your duty to chew and pass in your exam now what does it say see here a pri 
a pri who has a npa account what is npa non performing asset who is a non performing asset sir give us an example people the best example i can give you of vijay malya i have taken loan i have not repaid so i will become a non performing asset holder so if i a person whose loan has been categorized as npa now if i want to make overseas investment first of all greedy diver durase first repay whatever you have taken but still if you want to make first of all they should have not give, allowed you they will not allow you also but what are they said people if at all there is a pri who has an npa or people who is a willful defaulter willful defaulter people we have seen the definitions also what is willful defaulter willful defaulter is always given by the banks a person who wantedly has failed in repaying the loan is called as willful defaulter or a person who is under investigation by financial service regulators we have seen the definition rbi sebi irda pfrda if someone is investigating you or any investigating agencies who are the investigating agencies cbi direct rate of enforcement ed sfio serious fraud investigation office officer sfio sir so if at all you are coming under any of this i am a pri i have not repaid the loan npa i am a willful defaulter even after having money i have not paid sir i am under investigation by financial service regulators or by any other investigating agency if i have to make any financial commitment or even a disinvestment meaning i have already made sir i want to sell if i want to make or even if i have to want to sell then people i need to first apply for noc where sir from the bank when will bank will come into picture these two cases wherever i have not paid loan i have to take their noc or regulatory body what is regulatory body this one financial service regulator or investigative agency so sir in these cases people i need to take a, a approval noc before making this particular thing is clear ah clear ah so sir lender banker regulatory body investigating agency i need to take a noc so sir now imagine i'll apply to let us take for example rbi who oh, sir vijay mali applies to rbi sir i got a wonderful opportunity outside sir i'll collect all the money back sir can i make this investment we made an application vijay mali made an application rbi did not reply now what will happen to my application remember people failure to reply will be considered as a deemed approval so by default vijay mali will have a right to make an investment is this clear all of you pakka na so is important remember yes okay in noc account appearing as non performing classified as willful defaulter under investigation financial investigation is a cbi cs for investigation okay financial commitment noc from lender okay questionable point in your mcqs and all they can ask you so if it is not replied it is considered as deemed approval the no objection certificate issued under subsection 1 shall be addressed to the by the lender bank or regulatory body or investigating agency they have to give noc no okay sir whom should be addressed to you have to always address to ad bank because he is the person who will allow the money so you will address to the ad bank is this clear ah all of you simple ah okay manner of making overseas direct investment this is our next part when we'll come to schedules this will have uh, some relevance to you for now it has no relevance so forget don't worry okay there is something called pricing guidelines now what does this mean sir yes people there is next one small provision called as uh, pricing guidelines now what is pricing guidelines sir so whenever there is a uh, a transfer a issue or transfer of equity capital of a foreign entity from a proi or a pri who is eligible to make such investment or from a pri to a proi shall be subject to a price arrived on arms length basis now what do you mean by this sir very simple people a person whoever is residing in india basically our pri if at all the shares are coming to him 
or the shares are going out of him sir at what price he is buying at what price he is selling basically transferring people this price should be according to the arms length basis sir ye arms length basis kya hai people arms length basis means people you would have played in your pt in your school days basically people everything should be equal however they are treating you all the transactions around you should also be treated the same way sir how will i know that however the other person is getting the money i am also getting the same money how will you know that people you will know that by a valuation report so you should also get a valuation done and that should always be submitted to the ad bank is clear ah huh? it should be submitted to the ad bank so whatever are the transaction between uh, whatever the issue or uh, transfer of equity that is done by a pri to a proi proi to a pri basically you can take it from pri's point of view coming in going out so the pricing should always be at the arms length basis that's one thing remember clear ah simple okay the next one sir okay the next one people is called as restriction and prohibition now what is this people if you guys remember this it was there in your uh, uh, odi provision also sir let us quickly see how it was yes people so if you remember there was something called as prohibited sectors for odi which was already there you remember real estate tdr tamp some things were excluded and all same things people again almost similar things are given sir now what is that sir ha huh. now people almost similar things are given now what is that people see the prohibited sector so people you cannot make a odi to an entity which is into these things so you cannot make an odi to an entity which is into these things what is that sir first one is real estate which includes tdrs what is tdrs transferable development rights basically whenever a government acquires your land they will give you one certificate based on which you can uh, construct a building elsewhere something like that is called as transferable development right i'm telling you in a very basic layman's language so you cannot invest an entity which is into real estate includes tdr however real estate term does not include these things basically you can do investment into these activities it is possible that's the reason they are telling you real estate does not include these things what in all it is not included development of township you know your uh, township your urban development and all will happen next one sir construction of residential or commercial premises your mantri brigade sir roads or bridges basically infrastructure development nice road or any fancy bridges and all sir if at all the company is into this then they can odi can be made into such entities it is allowed anything apart from these three if it is a normal real estate people odi is not allowed remember that sir anything else sir people the other thing is gambling in any form betting uh, you know uh, uh, what is it rummy whatever you guys play sir not allowed third one people dealing in financial products linked to indian rupee <coughs> without rbi approval now what do you mean by this people they are telling a pri cannot make an investment into an entity which is doing these activities what is that first one is real estate if at all they are into that i cannot make this okay second one people if at all they are into gambling i cannot do it okay sir who is into gambling sir give an example dream eleven da the main objective is into gambling no uh, that uh, in uh, google pay offered i'm getting that uh, scratch cards what is it called rummy circle a23 they are all that only no sir third one sir uh, a company who is dealing in financial products linked to indian rupee meaning what sir imagine this entity they are selling some uh, financial products let us take some bonds sir these bonds are rupee denominated sir now these companies are issuing debentures so the denomination is into rupee sir anything people ecb you guys should have seen an ecb sir the denomination is rupee 
सर इफ द कंपनी इज ऑलरेडी इनवॉल्व इन रुपी रिलेटेड प्रोडक्ट्स इन सच एंटिटी द पी आर आई कैन नॉट इन्वेस्ट दिस इज एक्चुअली नॉट अ न्यू प्रोविजन दिस प्रोविजन वॉज ऑलरेडी देर इफ यू रिमेंबर इन योर प्रीवियस ओडीआई दिस प्रोविजन वॉज ऑलरेडी देर Okay, forget. Again, we is going to that. Okay, forget. So people, this provision was already there. It's nothing new. So in these sectors, you cannot invest. Remember, possible question, sir. There is a, some provision. You cannot invest into this systems. You cannot prohibition. There is something called restriction. See, earlier there was no restriction. There was absolute prohibition. Restriction means people, you cannot straight away do it. There is some conditions involved. prohibition you cannot do it at all so real estate there are some exclusions gambling and any company which is dealing with financial products linked to indian rupee in such companies you cannot invest okay what is restriction restriction sir i want to make an odi into a startup imagine people in that company in that country there is a startup just like we have a startup in india we have startups right if at all any company which is certified by uh, your uh, uh you know if you apply for your idea in a startup india.gov.in if at all your idea is a good idea you will get a startup india approval then you are called a startup imagine if there is a, some startup outside india and if your company is investing into that startup sir can i straight away invest uh, there is some restriction what is at see if you are a indian entity who wants to make odi Company wants to Indian entity body corporate LLP partnership. If they want to make an investment into a startup, then people they can make it only out of internal approvals. Meaning what? Imagine this is a Zomato. Just to today they went for an IPO. Just imagine they raised some further money. Can I invest that money here? Not allowed. Sir, can I take a borrowing in India? Can I invest that money? Not allowed. You have to do it out of the income generated accruals. Clear, ah? Huh? Sir, if it is an individual, sir, not an entity. A individual wants to invest. Now, what to do? It should be out of your own funds. It should be not borrowed. It should be out of your own funds. Remember, important. Yes, ah. People, if you go properly prepared, ah, you can aim at easily around five to. Seven marks from this particular uh, page, hardly eight pages. By now, you only would have known. Everything is manageable. Nothing is complicated. You just uh, read this and go. Da, uh, I think around seven pages is there. The uh, eight pages are there written. Everything is crystal clear. Uh, follow this and go. More than sufficient. Yes, sir. So next one. No financial commitment in foreign entity that has invested or invests. into india resulting in a structure with more than two layers of subsidiary meaning what sir a pri cannot make a financial commitment to a foreign entity it seems okay sir when can i not make a, a financial commitment i am telling financial commitment so i cannot make debt i cannot make non fund based i cannot make odi i cannot make anything in a foreign entity when sir a foreign entity that has already invested or which may invest in the future into india which will result in a structure with more than two layers of subsidiary if you remember people our section 2 subsection 87 subsidiary company definition and section 186 sir these two provisions tells one thing what in india you cannot have layers of subsidiary more than two so they are telling you imagine people if this foreign entity has subsidiaries subsidiary 1 subsidiary 2 so they already have layers of subsidiary in india sir you cannot invest in such entity which has already invested or which will invest in the future into a company which will make its layers of subsidiary more than 2 sir if at all this exceeds see what are they saying with more than two layers of subsidiaries so if subsidiary 3 is coming into picture in india in such a foreign entity you cannot make a financial commitment i repeat people a pri cannot make a financial commitment into a foreign entity which has or which may have more than two layers of subsidiaries which may result into 
two layers of subsidiaries in India, sir, in this case, people, it is not allowed. Here, uh, because according to Indian laws, it is not allowed. Simple. Uh, okay. However, this rule, what this rule, this rule of uh, three subsidiaries, you can even have four also, it seems. When, sir, this rule shall not apply to banking company, systematically important NBFC, insurance company, government company. So, sir, this rule shall not apply to a banking company, systematically important NBFC, insurance company and a government company. For them, this will not apply. So, even if they, the resultant will be more than two layers also, it's okay. You can do it is what they are telling. Sir, now your book has not defined, but you want to know what is the meaning of systematically important MB, NBFC. It is not defined people, but generally we call such NBFCs as systematically important whose asset size the asset size is more than 500 crore. Such NBFCs are called as systematically important NBFC. Why do we call systematically important? If such NBFCs fail, there will be a big impact on the GDP and economy of the country. So we call them, they are important. They are called as systematically important. Remember, not relevant. See people, most of, why I will tell you people, that the big buzz going on in the market. That uh, whatever is a new regulations, I am telling only from the student point of view, that uh, we are not understanding anything. There are too many terms. That The reason is that people, not every term will be defined in this particular uh, amendment. So we will have to go a little outside and we need to see what do you mean by that. Now just the way I told you about that restructuring and all, that is not defined. But that doesn't mean we should not know it, right? If we know it, when you are reading it, you need not have to buy hard. That is that is how I, I look into it. Clear up? Huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay. So, sir, there are two things. One was prohibition. One was restriction. What? From foreign investment. Sir, we saw prohibition. Prohibition into a entity which is into real estate, including TDR, does not include development of township. It does not include construction of residential or commercial uh, complexes. The, the third one is construction of roads or bridges. Gambling is also uh, included. You cannot uh, invest in such companies. And the third one is financial related securities. If at all you have issued Indian rupee related financial securities, you cannot invest in such companies. Restriction. Startup people, you can do it out of your own funds. Indian, in, I mean, accruals. Indian uh, individual is uh, investing people. Then it will be out of your own funds. So no financial commitment can be made. If at all, the resultant thing will lead to more than two layers of subsidies. Remember that. This rule shall not apply to bank, insurance, government company and systematically important NBFC. Simple, done. That's all. That is your prohibition and restriction. Let us see what your book says. Restriction and prohibition unless otherwise provided in the act or these rules, no person resident in India shall make ODI in a foreign entity engaged in real estate gambling or dealing with financial products. Real estate does not include. We saw this. Okay. Startup Indian entity accrue also from own funds in the case of resident individual. No PRI, two layers of subsidiary. Restriction shall not apply to our MBR. Okay, done. Okay. See, I am telling you this, this much of provision, we will be doing it only in this much thing. Can't you remember this much? Ada? Is it a big deal for you? Simple, no? Huh. What you need to do people with me, see the entire provision once at 1x speed. Do not put into 1.25, 1.5 and all. Watch it full, completely fully watch it. Whatever is the, uh, 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 you know, the material I've given, try to take a printout. The next time people again watch the same video at 1.25 or 1.5x. Two times you watched, if you still do not understand, then again ask me, I'll solve your question. Clear, huh? Okay, now. Nah? Okay. The next one people, something called as transfer or liquidation. There's a topic called as transfer or liquidation. Sir, now what is happening, sir? We are seeing from investment point of view. We did, sir. Okay. Now, sir, whoever is the PRI, he has invested, sir. Now he wants to disinvest. Meaning something is happening, sir, where I am selling my stake or I am transferring my stake, but there is a change happening. Sir, whenever there is a change happening, then what will happen? What are the rules? Yes, sir. Okay. Now see, a PRI may transfer his securities to a PRI or a PROI. It is allowed. 
I want to sell, I can sell. I want to gift, I can gift. It is allowed. How, sir? In accordance with these rules. Okay, I need to follow the rules with him. Okay, I will follow. However, in case of disinvestment, disinvestment means people, I had made an investment, now I want to sell it away. So, I want to disinvest my ODI. In case, in that case, what are the rules? The transferer should not have any outstanding for receipts from such foreign entity in case of full disinvestment other than liquidation. Now, what do you mean by that, sir? I had invested some money in a foreign entity. Okay. Now, I want to sell it off. How much? Imagine I had 100 shares. I want to sell away the 100 also. Full. See, full. If at all I want to sell only 50, then this provision will not apply at all. Sir, if I want to sell away my entire holding there, then people, the law says, there should not be any outstanding of receipts from such foreign entity. Meaning people, imagine I have invested in 100 debentures. Or imagine I have invested in 100 equity. Sir, the company has to still pay me dividend. The company should still pay me interest. If at all there is any outstanding, you cannot make the disinvestment until you realize the entire outstanding money you have to get. If at all you are not making full disinvestment, then this provision will not apply at all. Then you can completely sell. We don't have any problem. Rule number one. Rule number two. He should have stayed invested for at least one year. Meaning, sir, sir, today I invested, tomorrow I will withdraw. Sir, that is not allowed. Why? They logically think that you are taking from forex and you are investing. There will be from forex fluctuation and all. For one day, for, for five days, for five months, why does so much of risk go? Beka, Allah, you want all this. People, that is the reason they said you should have at least stayed invested for a minimum period of one year. You should be holding it for at least for a one year. So, sir, can I make a dis disinvestment allowed people? Condition number one, there should not be any outstanding dues. This applies only when you are disinvesting the full, you are making full disinvestment. The second one, to make such disinvestment, you should have at least been invested for a period of one year. If not, you cannot do it. Clear? Huh? Okay. So, so, it is very strict to know, sir, these conditions. That is the reason they say these conditions these conditions shall not apply. So, if these two conditions, uh, what is that uh, full disinvestment? That is, uh, I need to recover everything. Uh, and the second thing, one year, it will not apply. In case of merger, demerger, amalgamation, meaning, sir, hey, sir, there was company X. Uh, I was a shareholder in company X. Uh, sir, company X and company Y are merging and they are coming and they are making it as XY. Sir, automatically, I will get some new shares of XY, no? Automatically, my X shares will come to an end. No, they are saying these conditions will not apply. It seems when no, in that also there is a condition. See here, these conditions shall not apply in case of merger, demerger, amalgamation, where between foreign entities. Ah, X is also foreign, Y is also foreign. So what? A foreign entities that are wholly owned subsidiary of Indian entity. So X belongs to a Indian entity. Y also belongs to a Indian entity. Sir, there is a there is a merger, amalgamation, demerger happening between the wholly owned subsidiaries of Indian entity. Sir, only then people, the two conditions will not apply. What? Imagine I need to get something from X. There was some outstanding. I did not get it. Now I am getting a share in XY. It is allowed as long as it is a wholly owned subsidiary of Indian entity. Second one, I invested in X, it's not even been one year, it's been six months, it is allowed it seems. Sir, not every time it can be uh, our uh, wholly owned subsidiary of Indian entity, no sir. It is a very difficult, rare situation. That's the reason you have condition number two. Or, or there is no change or dilution in equity holding of Indian entity in the merged, demerged or amalgamated entity. Meaning what, sir? Sir, I was holding in X. I was holding in Y. Sir, now imagine an Indian entity had invested in X company. Sir, uh, now what is happening, people? This is not a wholly owned subsidiary of Indian entity. Okay. Now, sir, there is a merger, amalgamation, demerger, something is happening. We are getting share of XY. The law is telling people, whatever the condition, that is one year or the outstanding, will not apply as long as 
how much ever was your stake here the same thing continues in the new entity as well there should not be any dilution see there is no change or dilution in the equity holding of indian entity in the merged demerged or the amalgamated entity if that is the case then people then whatever is the disinvestment that can happen that can happen we don't have a problem even without satisfying the two conditions clear up okay third condition in case of transfer involving merger demerger amalgamation buyback or liquidation the approval of the competent authority as per indian law or the host country is required now what is this sir imagine people there is a transfer that is happening imagine sir uh, there is a pri who had invested in a company x sir company y imagine there is a merger happening or demerger or amalgamation happening or sir there is a buyback that is taking place in the company x buy back so they are buying back all the shares they had issued so i am selling back the shares to company x or sir there is a liquidation happening meaning people company x is being wind, wound up obviously then there will be a settlement no there is a disinvestment so sir merger dis demerger amalgamation buy back or liquidation sir if any of these things should happen they are saying people there should be an approval required by competent authority of the indian entity wherever you are from whoever is the competent authority for this you have to take their approval or any competent authority of the host country wherever this company x is there wherever this company x and y are there sir you need to take the approval of the competent authority in this jurisdiction that is a host jurisdiction if this happens people you can very well transfer basically the disinvestment or transfer can happen is this clear uh, simple uh, let us quickly summarize this provision sir what does it say when can i transfer or can i liquidate my investment sir it is allowed yes it is allowed how sir the first thing is a simple way how people in case of disinvestment if i have to do i have to make sure two conditions are satisfied the first condition number 1 outstanding dues should first be recovered second one i should have at least invested for one year this condition is not applicable when there is a merger demerger amalgamation between wholly owned subsidiaries of indian entity or there is no change basically there is no dilution of my holding if that is happening people then i don't have a problem even if you do not satisfy these two condition disinvestment can happen however in case of transfer involving merger demerger amalgamation and buyback and liquidation the approval of competent authority as per the indian law or the host country is required is this clear ah simple ah pakka na okay sir the next one sir restructuring restructuring what do you mean by restructuring sir sir i had invested in a, a foreign entity i had invested how much had you invested imagine people the capital of the uh, company let us take the capital paid up share capital of the company was uh, around 1 crore sir and the company was carrying on the business sir the company's assets was let us take for example 1 crore let us take lhs equal to rhs i am telling i am taking very simple things sir there was some genuine business losses sir there was a loss sir basically uh, uh, business losses only assume sir so we had to restructure our balance sheet imagine we lost around 20 lakhs now what is there on our asset side is 80 lakh only so what do we do we call our shareholders and we say that we have to reduce our capital you have to let go you would have studied this in your ca inter under the concept called as reduction of share capital sir can i do it the law is selling now the provision is regarding the restructuring can you do it what are the provisions what are the conditions applicable now see okay sir restructuring now see a pri has made a odi in a foreign entity he has made it okay now sir this foreign entity it wants to restructure its balance sheet is it allowed yes it is allowed 
sir for that can a pri give a permission the pri may permit for such restructuring he may permit it sir so for this entire thing to happen what are the conditions the conditions people whenever a pri has made a odi if that particular foreign entity if they want to restructure that balance sheet conditions people first one there should be a minimum loss for two previous years sir for the last two previous years the company should be in losses only then restructuring is allowed second one diminution in value of pri should be proportionate to accumulated losses meaning sir so the entire capital of the company was 80 lakh in that my share of investment imagine people was around 10 lakh people now how much ever you are re reducing the losses to the capital sir the reduction should be proportionate with losses it should not be sir this is 80 lakh i will reduce yours to 70 lakh that should not be the case whatever is a reduction that should be proportionate to the accumulated losses whatever has been the losses how much ever that is there only to that extent you can reduce you cannot reduce more than that good noda what if they are doing it like a business continuity planning let us have another 10 lakh as reserve sir please reduce it that cannot work that is what they are saying see diminution in value reduction in value of pri should be proportionate my shareholding reduction should be proportionate to the accumulated losses so whatever is accumulated losses my share should be reduced proportionately okay third one in case of diminution where original investment is more than 10 million dollar meaning people sir a pri has invested in foreign entity how much people my investment my investment is more than 10 million dollar it's more than 10 million dollar i have only invested 10 million dollar okay or the diminution exceeds 20% of total outstanding dues of the indian investor sir now what is it sir now see now see the this one let us see the actual criteria only in case where the amount of such diminution amount of diminution how much you are reducing in case where the amount of diminution exceeds 20% of total value of outstanding dues towards the indian entity or investor meaning what sir in case where the amount of such diminution amount of such diminution exceeds 20% of total value of outstanding dues towards the indian investor meaning sir how much ever i have invested that is a total outstanding money you need to give sir whatever is a reduction you are doing the reduction is more than 20% of the total money you need to give it to me sir aha uh -huh. we didn't understand imagine people what i invested is 1 crore so the company that has to pay me money is how much people company needs to pay me money 1 crore correct ah sir that is outstanding money now how much the company is planning to reduce the company is planning to reduce more than 20% of what it owes me so sir they want to reduce let us imagine 25 lakh so sir that is the condition they are talking about now read again in the case where the amount of such diminution how much they are reducing exceeds 20% of total value of the outstanding dues towards the indian entity or the investor how much ever we need to give if it exceeds 20% so sir if first now two conditions what are the two conditions people first one if i have invested 10 million dollar or if you are reducing more than 20% of the amount you owe me in this case what will happen the law says people such value shall be on arms length basis meaning sir how much ever you are reducing it to others i need to make sure yours also is being reduced on a arms length basis sir how will we know how much is being reduced to others others or me there is no discrimination how will i know that's the reason it should be certified by a registered valuer in india according to your companies act or a certified public accountant according to the host country cpa or a valuer registered with the regulatory authorities whoever are our regulatory authorities sebi and all 
whoever is registered with them sir he needs to give a certificate and sir that certificate should not be more than 6 months before the transaction meaning what sir now people whatever is the restructuring we are doing imagine we are doing it on 31st December 2023 sir the valuation certificate whatever we have obtained it should not be older than 6 months meaning people I will just take randomly 1st July 2023 it should not be before that so you should have got your valuation certificate some sometime before here within this particular time is clear huh? sir again let us see people sir is restructuring allowed where i have made a odi yes it is allowed we don't have any problem however restructuring is subjected to certain conditions sir what are the conditions basically there were two conditions Basically, there were two conditions. Now, what are the conditions are? First one, minimum, there should be losses for two years. Only then they can do it. Second one, people, diminution should always be in proportion to the accumulated losses. Okay. So, these two conditions should be satisfied. Okay. However, there is one extra condition. What? Whenever there is a restructuring and whenever there is a diminution, basically, your shares are being reduced. Your dilution is happening wherever if you have invested more than 10 million dollar or the reduction how much ever you have invested imagine 1 crore rupees they have to give you back 1 crore rupees if the reduction is exceeding 20 percent of the total outstanding money we have to give it to you so if they are reducing 21 crore 21 lakhs sir in these two cases people you need to make it at the arm's length transaction and second thing people for that effect you need a valuation certificate given by a registered valuer, CPA or valuer registered with the regulatory authority, which shall not be older than 6 months. Is this clear people? Pakka na. Here somewhere because there is numbers and all involved, they may ask you a question. Is clear all of you? Okay sir. You will read this from uh, the book once. Huh? Sir, in the case of transfer or liquidation, a person resident in India holding equity shares, the first thing just says it is allowed. Basically, we saw now PRI may transfer equity capital by of sale to a person resident in India who is eligible to make such investment under these rules or to a PROI. So, you can sell it to PRI, PRI can sell it to PRI or PROI. It can be done it to any person, it is allowed. Okay. So, next one, sir. In case the transfer is on account of merger, amalgamation, demerger, we saw this. What is that? Shall have the approval of the competent authority as per the applicable laws in India or the laws of the host country, as the case may be. Where the disinvestment by a person resident in India pertains to ODI. What is happening, sir? The transfer in case of full disinvestment, full disinvestment, other than by way of liquidation, shall not have any dues outstanding for receipt. So, he should first receive everything. However, the transfer in case of any disinvestment must have stayed invested for at least one year. Provided that the above conditions shall not apply. When sir, two or more foreign entities that are wholly owned by the Indian entity or where there is no change or dilution in aggregate equity holding of the entity in the merged or demerged amalgamated entity. There should be no dilution. Yes, sir. The holding of any investment or transfer thereof in any matter shall not be permitted if the initial investment was not permitted. Meaning what sir? Sir, can I transfer this or can I make a disinvestment? Sir, this disinvestment will not be allowed if the original investment itself was not allowed. Sir, we didn't understand. For example, people imagine Pakistan, you cannot make a direct investment. They are saying you cannot make any changes here. Because there are some rules and uh, regulations that will be applicable. Clear? Huh? Restructuring we saw, there is no additional thing here. Six months, same thing. We wrote everything. So, restriction and prohibition we have seen. Okay. The next one is immovable property. A simple one, nothing complicated, we will see. Okay. The next ones are, people, non-debt instruments, if you remember the definition, if you remember the definition of non-debt instruments, there was something called as immovable property also. You remember, huh? Yes, 
Yes, sir. Non-debt instruments include immovable property. Yeah. That's the reason regarding non-debt instruments, there are rules again given. Restriction on acquiring or transfer of immovable property outside India. Meaning what, sir? Now, there is some transaction happening, people. A PRI is acquiring some immovable property outside India. He is buying some immovable property outside India. Now, regarding that, people, there are some rules and restrictions. Now, what are that, people? Simple, nothing complicated. Now, rule one. Sir, if I want to acquire or transfer, basically, if I want to buy or sell, if I want to do so, I need a general or special permission from RBI. If I want to acquire any property in US, I need a special permission or a general permission by RBI. However, this general or special permission is not needed. There is an exception. When, sir, whenever people, it is held by a PRI who is a foreign national. People, our ABD Villiers case, you came to India, you have stayed in India. Imagine our FEMA provision, you are a PRI. You are still holding your uh, assets outside India. They are saying it's okay, we, didn't, we need not have to bother. A PRI who is a foreign national. For example, people, uh, let us take, uh, best example is uh, uh, Sundar Pichai. He is a foreign national. He belongs to Chennai. His roots belong to Chennai. Yes, sir, sir when he comes back, he is a foreign national. He is a foreign citizen. Sir, he can hold, it's absolutely fine and allowed, is what they are saying. Next one, sir. Acquired by PRI before 8th July 1947. In the class, I had given you an explanation regarding this. This is when that uh, split of India was happening, people. Basically, our independence time. There were people who belonged to outside India. They were staying in India. It can be our, uh, you know, many people. You can go to this Puducherry, Pondicherry and all. There are those French Portuguese, they, they were there in India. They have properties. Now, they had properties outside also. So, they can continue to hold whoever holding it before 8th July 1947. This was there in your FEMA provisions also. The last one, sir. A person acquired by PRI on lease, not more than 5 years. So, immoral property people, if at all you are acquiring on lease, not purchase. That too, not exceeding 5 years, it does not require general or special permission. Again, I repeat, a PRI, if he wants to acquire or transfer anything outside India, he ideally requires a general or special permission by RBI. But that is not applicable in three cases. When, if it is held by a PRI, who is actually a foreign national. Second one, he has held it on before 8th July 1947. The third one, acquired by a PRI on lease, not exceeding 5 years. Now, these do not require what people, general or special permission by RBI. Is clear? Okay. Sir, however, rule 1 shall not apply to. So, people rule 1, this will not, this will not apply it seems. Meaning, you know, don't need general or special permission. And rule 1 also has exception. So, this entire thing will not apply to these transactions it seems. What are those transactions? A PRI... A PRI acquiring from another PRI. There is already a PRI. He is acquiring it from another PRI. Hey, imagine uh, you and me. I am a PRI, you are a PRI. Both of us are in India only. I am acquiring it from you. They are telling you this, this provisions will not apply to When sir, whenever I get it by inheritance, a person dies, da, I get it. I need not follow all this. Second one, gift. You are giving it to me, da, then why should I bother? Hey, and one more thing, da, think everything is happening in India. And third one, sir, it is happening according to FEMA transactions. If at all any other case, if you are following FEMA provisions, then it is absolutely allowed. Second one, sir, if at all you are acquiring from PROI, PRI acquiring from PROI, how? Inheritance, absolutely allowed. Second one, people, RFC account, you have to make the payment, no, da, now the person is outside India. P-R-O-I, then how will you make, will you accept rupees, will that person accept rupees, you have to pay in dollars, RFC account is allowed. Third one, sir, RFC account illa, I don't have RFC, then you come to RBI, RBI will slap you and give, oh yo sir, why is slapping and all people, RBI will directly not slap you. RBI will allow you to pay up to one limit called as LRS systems which you guys had studied in your childhood. Sir, what is LRS? People, LRS da up to $2,50,000 per year. You are free to make any transaction. 
using that money if you are acquiring property outside india we are absolutely allowed if you are going beyond that take rbi approval we have done it in lrs same thing sir lrs limits can be consolidated with relative meaning people imagine the property value outside india is 5 lakh dollars sir two relatives can together come and combine their limit and acquire a property it is allowed or sir there is a pri there is a proi staying outside india only now this person uses his lrs limit and the rest of it is given by the proi outside india you can buy a property outside india with combining with a proi outside india you from india he from outside india together you guys can buy jointly with relative who is a proi so he is there then you can buy with him absolutely allowed the last one sir out of income or sale proceeds of assets overseas if you have any other assets overseas people you will be getting income out of it you will be selling it you sell one property and buy this however that should not be odi for that there are different provisions applicable for odi if you have any other assets people you sell it and you can reinvest it in here absolutely allowed is this clear okay third one sir who else can buy now i am seeing from pri point of view now this is specifically talking about indian entity sir infosys is there infosys wants to set up a office there they want to buy immobile property right sir infosys is there they'll be sending uh, uh, employees for training so they want to buy a small uh, hotel sort of thing or you can say a small house sort of thing where their directors their employees can go and stay i want to buy the immobile property can you buy allowed indian entity having overseas office may acquire an immobile property for business or residence of staff allowed as per rbi direction that's all yes sir sir so one thing pri is buying pri is buying sir here also indian entity is buying sir can i transfer that to someone else i have purchased can i sell it a pri who has acquired immobile property from outside india may gift to any eligible pri or he can even create a charge on it what is charge people if you want loan based on that property you can even mortgage that property and borrow loan charge you have it in your syllabus we have it even that topic is also there but sir end of the day this is allowed sir immoval property let us sum it up again people what does it say rule one people whenever you are buying any immobile property outside india can you buy ideally according to rule one people you need to follow general or special permission of rbi however there is exception where there is no permission required when is that sir whenever a, uh, the immobile property is held by a pri who is a foreign national or you have acquired it before 8th july 1947 or it is on lease for not exceeding 5 years sir rule 1 shall not apply at all when people a pri is acquiring from pri by inheritance gift to or according to fema provision pri is getting from proi how by inheritance rfc lrs jointly with relative in india only you can combine the limit or with a proi outside india you can take it or according to the sale proceeds whatever you get excluding odi third one indian entity can it set up a immobile property outside india yes for its business as well as residence purpose of its staff allowed a pri whoever has acquired immobile property he can gift it or even he can create a charge on that it is allowed absolutely fine clear all of you done non applicability overseas investment people i hope you guys are understanding the yes or no okay now people now listen carefully whatever we have seen till now people is who can do it how you can do it basically what you have seen people a pri can invest a pri can invest in odi fc a immobile property a pri can be entity a pri can be individual we have seen that you can invest you cannot invest and all we have seen restrictions and all now sir we will be looking at from the rules point of view how do we do it sir whenever a entity wants to invest how do we do it sir whenever a individual wants to invest how do we do it i told you in the later part when we are doing something called schedules now this will make sense i told you what is that sir 
see there is one part only called as manner of making overseas direct investment whenever i am making this odi or any financial commitment or overseas portfolio investment sir what is the procedure manner means people procedure how can i make it sir they have given you five things people that is called schedules every schedule talks about one procedure if you want to make odi there is one procedure if you want to make opi there is one procedure basically for everything there is a procedure ayyo sir yes sir so much are yes people too much is there how much i'll show you wait see from here it starts schedule 1 that is schedule 1 see this is schedule 2 schedule 3 schedule 4 and there is schedule 5 yes sir only this much nothing else clear ah yes sir ayyo sir too much no sir people let us reduce it as much as possible how sir now see now people schedule 1 what as a schedule 1 say everything is simplified people you guys have to just pay a little attention that's all yes people so i said there are some schedules schedules talks about people how to make this in particular investment okay sir now whenever i want to know how to make this particular investment the first schedule talks about people the first schedule talks about an odi by a indian entity so if a indian entity wants to make an odi people then what are the conditions if a indian entity wants to make a odi a odi may be made by how and all can you make you can made make by subscription to moa bidding or tender rights issue or bonus issue so basically people how and all i can make an odi you imagine there is one indian entity this indian entity wants to invest in another foreign entity okay how and all they telling the first one is by subscription so when during incorporation itself you can invest second one bidding or tender so basically imagine a company is been shut down or if a company is being asked for a takeover they are asking for tenders bidding whoever gets a, for example in case of satyam when satyam computers was falling there was a bidding that was done uh, the highest bid was given by uh, tech mahindra basically mahindra mahindra took over satyam and today it became tech uh, tech mahindra so that bidding if at all you want to invest in that way also you can uh, become the third one people rights issue or bonus issue you are already a shareholder you want to invest some more shares it can be by rights issue or bonus issue allowed the fourth one is called as capitalization in capitalization there is a condition basically what do you mean by capitalization people indian entity has sold some raw material to foreign entity have sold some material instead of taking money in return people i am telling foreign entity don't give me money instead give me equity sir in this way also you can make a odi is what they are telling next one people swap of securities what do you mean by swap of securities i'll give you my shares you give me your shares you can do it it seems allowed the next one people merger demerger amalgamation obviously how will i become a shareholder how can i make a odi i was a shareholder in company x there is company x and y they are merging together and they are becoming company x y so how will i get shares of company x y obviously by merger now i am getting a new share because i was already a shareholder here again it is one of the way only right they are giving you only that only yes sir so odi may be made by subscription bidding rights issue bonus capitalization swap of securities merger demerger amalgamation or any arrangement sir with regards to capitalization there is some condition they have written what is that capitalization should happen within the time period if any specified for realization meaning people in your fema provisions you would have seen you should receive the money imagine within one year so the capitalization should also happen within one year of any amount due towards the indian entity from the foreign entity the remittance of which is permitted under the act or does not require prior, prior permission of central government or the rbi under the act or any rules or regulations made or directions issued there under 
so you have to do it within so much of time as according to the act within that time only there should be this capitalization and the next one people it can be only made provided this particular capitalization should be permitted and there should be no prior approval required from central government or rbi imagine it is from pakistan so if you want to make an odi you need to take a prior, prior approval so in such cases until you take that it is not allowed is what they are telling this is clear huh? okay sir so sir an indian entity can make an odi in a foreign entity allowed sir now we are becoming a little more uh, greedy what a indian entity wants to make an odi in a foreign entity which is into imagine this is a foreign entity sir this foreign entity is into financial services they are into financial services it can be pension it can be provident fund it can be insurance it can be banking but they are into financial services sir now the question is can i indian entity invest into a foreign entity which is into financial services is it allowed people the conditions are indian entity also should be in the financial services so first thing you should also be a bank only then you can invest in a bank clear ah okay sir next one sir next one sir the company should be net profits in the preceding 3 years so people if you want to invest money into the financial sector your company should be at least in the basically should be making profits people in the preceding 3 years next one people you should be registered with the financial service regulator who are they we have seen rbi sebi irda pfrda you should be registered with them or approval from regulator of both the countries so people you have to take an approval from your regulators sir i am going to invest in that financial sector is it okay from the regulator of your country from the regulator of the foreign entities country also sir you need to take all these approval only then a company can invest in a foreign entity which is into financial sector sir is there any other way sir imagine sir i am not you are telling that even i have to be in a financial sector yes you should be in profit for the last 3 years yes your financial regulator you should be registered yes you have to take their approval yes sir imagine sir i am not into financial sector can i still invest in a, a company which is into financial sector is it allowed the law says people see indian entity not in financial service may make odi in the financial service oh ho oh, oh, ho oh. people i am not into financial services i can still make investment in financial services sims oh lottery sir how there is one exception see what is that you can make investment except that foreign entity should not be into banking or insurance sector sir what else is left other things are left no doubt it can be stock it can be pension pfrda uh, capital market related it, it can be into that but it should not be banking or insurance related business so sir if i am not into financial sector if you are into financial sector i can do it yes exception people you should not be a bank you should not be into insurance ayyo yo so that is a big loss no sir okay now because you said it is a big loss they gave one more exception what you can invest into insurance but what type of insurance it can be general and health insurance except general and health insurance with support the core activity undertaken overseas meaning sir you can invest it sims you can invest into a foreign entity which is into insurance but which insurance people that company should be into health insurance or people the company should be into general insurance life insurance not allowed and that two people this insurance why for everyone is it allowed ah no sir whatever is my company this insurance whatever is the investment i am making this particular investment should help me to support my core business activities only then i am allowed just for earning money if you want to do it it is not allowed understood uh, now read once sir too much sir gaji biji sir nothing people see i'll tell you one thing to remember these provisions it takes little time people that is the reason even i am doing it a little slow only i'm not just dumping it away if not i can just read off no 
Yes, sir. So, so see, generally people, if at all you want to make investment into financial sector, is it allowed? Yes, allowed. First thing, you should be financial sector. Net profits in preceding three years registered with regulator. Permission should be taken. Sir, what if I'm not into financial sector? You cannot invest into bank insurance. Exception people, general and health insurance provided that should support your core business activity. Is this clear? Huh? Okay. Sir, and not only that people, you should have net profit in the preceding three years. Meaning sir, so I'm not into financial service. I want to invest allowed provided. That is what I told you. It should not be into bank and insurance. Exception was there. And you should also have the net profit in the preceding three years. That is a common condition here also, here also. This is there here also, even here also. It is a common condition. Clear? Huh? Okay. Next one, sir. If Indian entity does not meet net profit requirement due to COVID. Oh, what is this, sir? People, if you remember, in uh, March 2020, there was COVID. Sir, now these two years, people, was not great for a lot of people. Now, in the year 22-23, I want to make an investment in a financial service sector. What is the main condition? In the preceding three years, people, I should be in profits. But sir, biggest of the biggest companies, people, they have not seen profits in these two years, 2021 20, and 21-22. Sir, now what to do? People, there was a relaxation given people. If at all you were not able to meet profits in these two years, because it was COVID time, people, these two years were excluded. So when you're counting people, you need not count for these two years. You can take the three years before that. So you can take 1920, 1819 and 1718. That is allowed. Is this clear all of you? Pakka, that is what is the third condition. Any doubts? See? Clear? Huh? Okay, sir. So, sir, I understood one thing. What, sir? First of all, can I make ODI allowed? In what ways and all we saw? Okay. Second one, can I make ODI in financial sector? There are some conditions we saw. The third one, sir, limit of financial commitment. You are telling that I can make a commitment. Yes, sir. How much I can invest? People, the limit on financial commitment includes debtor, non-debtor and also ODI. Everything put together, the maximum you can do is 400% of the net worth of the company. 400% of the net worth. That is the maximum you can do. Sir, in this what and all is included, what and all is excluded. People included. It includes utilization of amount raised by ADR, GDR and ECB. Sir, what is this sir? Utilization of amount raised by ADR, GDR, ECB. Imagine people, a Indian entity, it issues ADR or GDR and it raised dollar outside India. And that dollar straight away they invested into foreign entity. The law is telling people in the 400%, even this investment is also counted, which you did not bring back to India. You raised it there, you invested there only. That is counted in the limit of people, your 400%. Sir, meaning what, sir? Uh, same thing, this applies to even ECB also. I borrowed money from abroad, sir. External commercial borrowing because there was a, uh, the interest rates were very uh, lesser, so I borrowed money from uh, outside India. Allowed. Okay, you can do it. People, the law said, people, whatever is the money you raised, you invested that there only in the foreign entity. The law said, people, you need to count this also in your 400% net worth. So, how much can an Indian entity invest outside India? You can invest, people, 400% of your net worth of the company. Sir, if at all 1 crore is my net worth, 400% people, you can invest up to 4 crore. This is clear? Huh? Sir, in this 4 crore, if at all you have raised money from abroad and if you have invested that there only, that will be reduced here. You cannot add, take it as an extra. That is what they are telling you. And it also includes people, stock swap. Meaning, sir, I have given my shares and I have taken their shares. Whatever is your shares you have given, that will also be included in the limit. Is this clear all of you? Pakkana. Okay, the fourth one. Sir, for Maharatnas, Navaratnas, Mini Ratnas. Sir, now what is this, sir? Is this jewelry shop? Huh? Maharatna, Navaratna, Mini Ratna is nothing but the government of India has categorized our public sector undertakings. Like people, ONGC, Gale, 
uh, you know, all these things are being categorized based on their performance as Maharatna, Navaratna, Miniratna. You can just Google it. In Wikipedia, you'll get a big list of Maharatna, Navaratna, Miniratna, Yuvaratna, you know, you'll get it. Sir, for them, they can make a financial commitment without any limited sums. Awesome, no, sir, but not in every sector, only in strategic sectors. Gas, minerals, coal, energy, in these things, if you are investing, no limit, absolutely, you can do it. This is Schedule 1. In Schedule 1, what they have given people? An Indian entity which wants to make ODI. An Indian entity which wants to make ODI. Sir, what are the ways to do? Financial sector. The third one talks about limit. The fourth one says there is an exception. Now, people, one more thing. In this limit, something is excluded. What is that, people? Capitalization of retained earnings. Capitalization of retained earnings. Sir, what is this, people? Indirectly, it means nothing but bonus issue. If at all you are getting any bonus issue, people, you are not really investing money, no, da. Your money is not going. So, if at all your, your stake increases because of bonus issue, that you need not include in the limit is what they are telling. You can exclude it in the 400%. Sir, meaning what, sir? Imagine if I have made 4 crore worth investment. I have already made. Now, because I got bonus issue, this became 4.5 crore. Have I breached the limit? The answer is no. You can exclude this 0.5 crore. Here, yes, sir. That is schedule 1. Sir, next one is Schedule 2. Schedule 2 people, see, Schedule 1 was ODI. Schedule 2 is OPI by Indian entity. OPI, other than ODI, listed debt, that is what they are telling you. Sir, how much can I make? OPI shall not exceed 50% of net worth. So, people, an Indian entity can make 400% of ODI, another 50% of OPI. Sir, sir, is it both uh, included, sir? It is 400 plus 50 percent. This is this limit, this is extra limit, absolutely allowed. So, OPI shall not exceed 50 percent of net worth. Listed entity may make OPI by way of reinvestment. Reinvestment means people, I had already invested. I can sell it and I can, I can reinvest it again, allowed. Unlisted Indian entity may make OPI under rights issue. Bonus issue, capitalization, swap of securities, merger or demerger. So, sir, sir, unlisted Indian entity may make OPI under rights issue, bonus issue, capitalization, swap of securities, merger, demerger or amalgamation. So, people, unlisted entity can make OPI itself. How? I already had shares. I get an opportunity to invest more, rights issue, bonus shares. Now people, if you guys are thinking, how can OPI be considered as equity? Rights issue and all is equity only, no? How is it coming here? People, you remember, if at all I have less than 10% in listed entity, but I do not have control, it is called OPI only, no? Where did we see that, sir? Hey, where did we see it? ODI definition, the fourth condition. If at all I have less than 10% in listed entity, and I do not have control, then what happens? In such case, people, it will be considered as OPI. So, law is telling, in such case, on those shares, if you are getting rights, bonus, capitalization, it is allowed, it seems absolutely fine. Clear? Huh? So, this is Schedule 1, this is Schedule 2. Any doubts, people? Pakka? Okay.